Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Jana and I'm going to be helping Dr. Chang moderate the webinar today. Uh, I wanted to just go through a couple housekeeping things so you know how to engage during the webinar. Uh, Dr. Chang is going to review a lot of uh, cataract information today and include some frequently asked questions at the end. However, if you do have a question throughout the, the webinar, you can actually chat it to us over on the right hand side of your go to webinar panel in the question section. And uh, at the end, I'll actually read those to Dr. Chang and have him address those. Um, without further ado, I'm going to turn the, the mic over to Dr. Chang and he's going to talk to us today about cataract surgery. Uh, Dr. Chang? Uh, hello everyone, this is uh, Dr. Chang here. Uh, thank you very much for signing up for this uh, webinar on cataracts and cataract surgery. I'm very proud to say that we've had a, an amazing showing of uh, guests with over 100 signing up. Uh, I want to introduce myself. Uh, I have uh, been with uh, Skyline Vision since 2005. I've been a cataract surger, surgeon for nearly 20 years performed nearly 30,000 cataract surgeries uh, during that time. And um, uh, I hope you can find some valuable uh, information and pearls regarding uh, our practice as well as, as the surgeries. And if you have any uh, questions at the end, I'd be more than happy to answer all of them if I can. But we'll start off with this PowerPoint slide and basically explaining uh, what cataracts are. Cataracts are the clouding of the eye's natural lens. So the natural lens is located inside your eye, behind your iris, and it is a spectrum of changes that over time, the lens will become cloudier uh, with time. Uh, it's usually age-related. There are other reasons that cataracts can develop de uh, dependent on your health, uh, environmental issues, dietary issues, and so forth. But for the most part, most of us will develop cataracts uh, as we age. Uh, uh, the cataract symptoms can be pretty subtle or they can be pretty pronounced. Um, most people will uh, present to our practice with complaints of changes in their, in their vision. They can uh, describe it as being cloudy, blurry, out of focus. Sometimes they'll just have symptoms in certain contexts of, uh, say, driving at night with glare and halos uh, with oncoming headlights. They'll say that uh, the colors appear faded. Uh, most will say the white walls appear yellowish. Some people even have some double vision. And it's not necessarily double, but people will see a ghosting of the image where the uh, some objects will appear to have a shadowing uh, around them. The initial effect of a cataract that's age-related is that there are changes in the refractive index of the lens itself, which causes a person to initially have changes in their eyeglass prescription. Uh, most commonly, people will start to get more nearsighted. Uh, it can go the other way, but the nearsightedness uh, is the most common refractive change with a advancing cataract. So initially, you may not notice any symptoms, but just have a, a change in your eyeglass prescription from year to year. Everyone gets cataracts eventually. Um, by age 80, more than half of all Americans have visually significant cataracts. It's a leading cause of vision loss in adults over age uh, uh, 50. Um, we can all have them and not even know it. I would say that looking at some demographic information at our practice, the average age of our cataract population is about 74, uh, plus or minus five years, uh, accounting for the vast majority of our cataract patients. Cataracts are not a, a medical emergency. Um, obviously, we can live with cataracts. Uh, they're not going to uh, cause us to <laughs> have any life uh, altering changes uh, in terms of uh, our, our uh, life expectancy, but uh, it does affect your quality of life. And if you're not seeing well, uh, it can uh, affect the safety of your driving, uh, walking, ambulating, uh, but your quality of life can certainly be affected uh, by your vision. 
Now on to cataract surgery. Uh, cataract surgery is the most commonly performed surgery in the whole world. In the United States, over 3 million are performed annually. The, cat the cataract surgery is considered one of the safest and certainly one of the most successful surgeries uh, 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 performed. Uh, we have performed thousands of procedures, of course, I have mentioned. Uh, I have done quite a few, um, and it is kind of a, um, a surgery that uh, most people have uh, a great result with high level of safety and uh, great results. Uh, a, I will talk about a typical cataract surgery. Um, when we have surgery, it, we will perform it in a uh, ambulatory surgery center. It's a uh, same day surgery. Uh, you uh, will arrive um, most often about an hour before your scheduled procedure time. Uh, during that time, there's some forms that are uh, signed and filled. Uh, you are escorted into a, uh, a bay where you have a dedicated eye surgery bed for you. Uh, we um, uh, will have a IV available to instill uh, IV sedation. We dilate your eyes during this time. And then when we are uh, about to take you into your surgery, we uh, roll you into a, 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 a operating room and you are laid flat. And we then sterilize your eyes and get you uh, connected to our monitors to make sure that your vitals are being um, um, safely checked throughout the entire procedure. The initial part of our surgery is uh, where we insert a speculum that will keep your eyes open. So you won't uh, be dependent on keeping your eyes open through that entire procedure. The very first step is then uh, making small incisions that allow me access to inside the eye to, uh, to remove that cataract. Once we make the incisions, we perform a, a, a part of the procedure called the capsulotomy, which is a round uh, incision around the natural covering of your eye called the capsule. Once we do that, uh, we then remove your cloudy lens with a handheld probe called a, uh, a micro, uh, or a, a fecal handpiece, and that will fragment the cornea with ultrasonic energy. And once it's fragmented, it's then aspirated through that tiny handpiece uh, by the fecal emulsification mach machine. Once the cataract is removed, uh, we then uh, have a predetermined intraocular lens implant with a certain power to correct your vision to your desired focal length. Uh, for whether it's either distance or near vision, and then we implant it inside your eye. The, very, the time uh, needed to perform the surgery does vary between surgeons and uh, between the type of cataracts and the complexity of the cataract surgery. Uh, I would say my typical time to perform the surgery is anywhere between four to six minutes uh, for the vast majority of the cases. So it's very, very quick. Uh, the IV sedation should keep you very, very um, calm and sedated, uh, but uh, we have varying levels of uh, sedation that we can apply uh, based on your anxiety and fear, uh, but uh, it's a very uh, comfortable and painless procedure. After the first eye is done, if the second eye is needed, it uh, is usually done one to two weeks afterwards. We do have other... Um, higher levels of technology that we incorporate in our uh, cataract planning. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have a uh, wonderful uh, laser cataract platform called Catalyst. And this femtosecond laser system allows us to do uh, our cataract surgeries latelessly. And it also allows us to uh, treat uh, small to moderate amounts of astigmatism. The, the level of precision and accuracy is uh, multiple multiple times greater than what our human hand can perform. The typical catalyst uh, laser cataract surgery will take anywhere between 15 to 30 seconds to perform. Uh, the advantages are once again, better results in vision, uh, more comfort, 
uh, less ultrasound is uh, used when doing this type of cataract procedure, resulting in faster recovery as well. Um, some of the things I just mentioned, there's a photo of our uh, catalyst platform. The bed is where uh, you'll be laying on if you, uh, in fact, chose to proceed with this mode of uh, cataract surgery. And uh, we use a little suction ring that we put on the eye. It's very, very gentle and it's very quick. Um, certainly, it uh, has improved our results in um, most cases. So we have um, many different implant options nowadays, and it can be very confusing. The vast majority of our patients will opt for what we call a standard monofocal implant. This implant is what your insurance will cover um, for your surgery. It can provide a crisp vision for either distance, intermediate, or near, but not all three. Um, the vast majority of patients do tend to choose better distance vision and wear glasses for up close vision. However, I would say probably 15 to 20 percent of patients uh, do choose to keep their uh, uh, near vision intact and wear glasses for distance. So it's very important for the surgeon to have a, a, a extended discussion as to how one would like to see after cataract surgery. We do have other options uh, in, uh, that we can provide to provide a greater range of vision. There's a, a couple different types of multifocals that can be divided into a multifocal implant or, a, or an accommodating implant. These two different technologies are entirely different, but they're trying to give you more near vision and reduce your dependence on glasses. Our multifocal choice that we're using currently at Skyline Vision is called the Pan Optics Trifocal Implant. It's been very successful for the right candidate and can deliver distance, intermediate, and near. Prior to this implant, we've had multifocals that really did distance and near, but had uh, an intermediate, intermediate vision that was not quite as sharp as the other two distances. This is the first implant that can address all three distances with greater success. The crystal lens accommodating implant is one we have and do implant occasionally. Uh, it is more of an implant that will allow you to have good distance and intermediate vision. The up-close vision is not as sharp uh, as the multifocals. The way the accommodating implant works is that it tries to simulate your natural accommodative reflex when you have the stimulus of wanting to read up close. It flexes inside the eyes, uh, but the effect is, I would say, modest. I tell most of my patients who opt for the crystal lens for one reason or another that they can still expect to wear reading glasses, but it is a good option for the right candidate. Lastly, the Torque implants are one that we use quite frequently. And these implants are designed to uh, reduce and minimize astigmatism. Astigmatism is referring to the shape of the cornea. Most of us do have a cornea that is shaped somewhat like an egg, sometimes like a football, where it's not perfectly round. The effect of, effect of the astigmatism is that if it is uncorrected, it causes blur, and it usually causes blur at all distances. By opting for the torque implant, we can reduce that astigmatism to improve the vision uh, for distance and near. So frequently asked questions uh, that I run into are one, is cataract surgery safe? Um, yes, it is one of the safest surgeries that we perform in the world. The success rate uh, for a uncomplicated case is uh, almost pretty much 99% in my hands, if not 99.9. Um, the greatest risk for cataract surgery is infection. Infections do happen in any sort of surgery. Uh, the infection rate nationally is about one in 2,000. I uh, personally have had uh, two infections in the past 20 years. Uh, uh, so for the most part, the cataract surgery is extremely safe. Two, does cataract surgery 
hurt. Um, the cataract surgeries, we can basically describe it as being nearly painless. There are some patients who have a different level of pain threshold or the anatomy of the eye is different so that they'll feel a little bit more pressure during surgery. If a person does in fact feel pressure or feel pain, our anesthetist or anesthesiologist is there to uh, provide more pain relief and sedation uh, that works very rapidly to uh, improve uh, your experience. So yes, it may have a little bit of uncomfortable uh, uh, sensation during the surgery, but it is uh, addressed uh, very, very quickly. What happens after surgery? After surgery, once uh, it is completed, you're wheeled back into the post-operative recovery room. We have a set of vitals to make sure that um, you're in good shape. Uh, we provide a snack and a drink and then we discharge it and you can go home and pretty much go back to your normal routine. You will have an eye uh, shield that you'll wear for uh, the first hour uh, and at bedtime for the first several days. But overall, the, the eye will feel a little scratchy and dry. It may have a little of a burning sensation for a few hours, uh, but there's no pain afterwards. Uh, period, uh, afterwards. Uh, you will be scheduled for several post-operative visits. We like to have you see uh, um, either myself or one of my uh, peers or your uh, co-managing doctor the very next day. We have a post-op appointment uh, one week after that and a final one um, three weeks after that as well. During those uh, post-operative visits, we measure your vision, your eye pressure, and make sure that uh, you're satisfied with the way you're seeing. Lastly, does insurance cover cataract surgery? Yes, cataract surgeries are covered by insurance. Um, many people ask if there's a certain vision one has to be at in order to have the cataract surgery covered. Essentially, you have to have symptoms, uh, visual symptoms that are related to the cataract in order for the insurance to cover. Whether it's difficulty watching the TV, reading a book, having nighttime glare or halos, if you have uh, visual symptoms or a reduction of vision that is affecting your quality of life um, and that is attributable to your cataracts, then your insurance will cover your cataract surgery. Very good. We kind of we covered over covered the safety of the cataracts here. Complications are very, very rare. We did talk about the pain involved. Um, it's virtually painless. We can't, we, there can be a little bit of pressure during the procedure, uh, but it's very, very quick. And I would say the vast majority will rate their um, cataract surgery as being painless. All right, we went over some of the um, expectations after surgery. The eye rubbing is really the biggest uh, thing that you have to refrain from doing, uh, even lifting uh, some um, objects as much as 20, 25 pounds is fine. Uh, being in a clean environment is very uh, important. I did mention I had a couple infections, unfortunately. One uh, was a uh, cowboy who decided to uh, shovel horse manure the very next day and got an infection, unfortunately. And we did talk about your uh, cataract surgery being covered. So the traditional surgery, which uh, involves me using um, blades to create your incisions, also my hands uh, with micro instruments removing the cataracts are covered. That's what we um, would call traditional surgery with a monofocal implant period. If uh, there are upgrades that you would like to, um, uh, to consider, those upgrades such as the catalyst fentanyl second laser surgery, torque implants, multifocal implants, those are not covered uh, by insurance, unfortunately, and those would uh, incur some out-of-pocket cost to yourself. 
So um, is it time for surgery? Well, that's a good question. Uh, that's something that you would have to evaluate for yourself and, uh, in terms of whether or not you feel like you're seeing as well as you ought to be seeing. And if you feel like there are vision changes, uh, make an appointment, making an appointment with your primary eye care provider or at Skyline Vision would be the most appropriate thing to know how the health of your eyes are uh, at the present moment. Um, if there are cataracts uh, uh, present, uh, there will be uh, an extensive discussion of what your goals are and how we can match the current technology available to meet your lifestyle choices can be uh, done at that visit. Typically takes about an hour. Um, cataract surgery, I think, uh, will uh, improve the quality of your life and the way you see. Um, uh, we're excited to uh, see uh, any of, one of our attendees uh, in the future. So I'll open up the forum for any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, so feel free to chat. There's a few that came in, a few questions that came in while you were presenting Dr. Chang. So I'm going to go ahead and get those started. But if anybody else wants to ask any questions, feel free to chat them in the panel um, on the GoToWebinar. So first question is after surgery, if vision has been improved in that eye and the second eye is scheduled two weeks later, how long before can you actually get glasses that allow you to see correctly? Oh, that's, that's great. So if you need glasses uh, for distance, if you have uh, a need for distance glasses, um, the refraction will be likely stable between two to three weeks after the second eye. Uh, patients can get a, uh, a glasses prescription then. Uh, I would say most offices will provide a glasses prescription at week three to four, however, just to be sure that there's no uh, changes um, and, and they receive it at their last post-op visit uh, at that one month mark. A lot of patients will have their distance vision corrected and will have good vision uh, immediately afterwards. So they can, the very next day or even the same day, uh, if they already don't have any uh, reading glasses, just go to uh, any drugstore and pick up an over-the-counter pair of reading glasses to read. Uh, but for the distance glasses, it can be anywhere from three to four weeks after the second eye. Can floaters be removed at the same time as a cataract surgery? That's often uh, asked question as well. Uh, floaters are um, the vitreous uh, opacities that occur with age. Um, in the back of the eye, behind the lens, the, the, there's a vitreous cavity that's filled with a jelly called vitreous. And this jelly is a formed um, jelly that is clear and attached to the retina. Over time, as this vitreous degenerates, uh, it will detach off the retina and will then float in the middle of the eye. Uh, when it floats and as light enters it, it casts a little shadow and people can then um, see, uh, have the sensation of seeing either cobwebs, uh, crescents, uh, a veil, or even just dots that uh, are, are um, from that floater. Because it is behind the cataract itself, uh, it cannot be accessed or removed at the time of cataract surgery. Um, many people after cataract surgery, in fact, will say their floaters may seem a little bit more prominent because more light is allowed into the eye after the cataract surgery. The floater is something that every one of us will have over time, but over the course of several months, the floaters will typically shrink, contract, and with gravity, float uh, uh, inferiorly where they're less likely to cause you to have those symptoms. If a floater is extremely symptomatic in some individuals, uh, we can remove them. It's a separate surgery, but we would have to refer you out to a retina specialist to have that uh, removed. There are some risks uh, involved with this, uh, but uh, in general, it's a very successful surgery as well. Um, by far away, most people will never have to uh, consider that option though. Great, thank you, Dr. Ching. Um, another person asked, a neighbor had cataract surgery and every year or so they've had to have some sort of laser follow-up. Can you explain that? 
After cataract surgery, the vast majority of patients will have a secondary film called a posterior capsule, capsular opacity form. The capsular bag is that part of the eye where we remove the cataract and where we then insert the intraocular lens. The capsular bag has a certain size and when we put a uh, implant in, the implant is much smaller than the space that the capsular bag occupies. So in order to uh, heal and fixate, fixate that lens from it from rotating around freely, the capsular bag will kind of shrink wrap around that implant. And as it shrink wraps, it can act and look like um, something like saran wrap where there are wrinkles and uh, uh, some cloudiness that forms around that intraocular lens implant. That film and wrinkle can cause symptoms of decreased vision, nighttime glare and halos, and kind of may even feel like the cataract has uh, come back. Um, during our annual visits, we look for the formation of this posterior capsule opacity. If there is one that is formed and reducing the vision, then we perform a procedure call, called a YAG capsulotomy. The YAG capsulotomy is a very quick procedure where a laser is used to open up that film uh, in order to restore the, the vision. The laser will take between five and 10 seconds. It's covered by insurance. Once that laser is performed, that film does not return. So if uh, a person is coming in on an annual basis and the film is uh, uh, not significant, then that's just something that we will look for uh, annually. But once it's completed, it's nothing to be uh, concerned about afterwards. And this, uh, the next question is uh, kind of piggybacks off of what you just addressed, but do cataracts come back? Cataracts uh, will never come back. Uh, once your natural lens is removed and the artificial lens implant is placed, that artificial implant uh, would be um, lasting for the rest of your life. Um, so no, the cataracts will never um, return. Great, and then this is a very specific question. Uh, can you address the aura upgrade from people who have had previously previously had LASIK? Yes, uh, that wasn't in the slide, uh, but the aura is a wonderful technology that we have available to us. Uh, the aura is a diagnostic instrument that is uh, connected to our microscope in the operating room. And what the aura does is that it can uh, calculate for us with this proprietary software and algorithms the power of the implant uh, for, this, for the patient that is more accurate than the current calculations we do in the office. So when we do calculations in the office, it uh, has a very high success rate, but even in the best practices due to the technological limitations of uh, what we call a uh, IO master or a A scan. Uh, most people will have a, a, a range of a result of plus or minus the diopter in about 60 to 65 percent of the time. Uh, with the aura, once the cataract is removed during the cataract surgery, uh, we uh, turn on and initiate the machine which uh, then will measure 40 images of your um, eye to then calculate uh, the implant power that it suggests will uh, better fit your eye to uh, reach your refractive goals. So if you want the distance vision, the, uh, the aura will calculate the implant power of far more accuracy and our results have shown that our results have uh, improved to a range around 85, 90% where within that very small range of uh, what we consider a very good refractive result. So, uh, it is not covered by insurance. Um, it is something that is uh, once again out of pocket, uh, but it is one of those upgrades that has a tremendous amount of uh, yield uh, for the cost of the procedure. It's particularly helpful for patients who've had prior refractive surgery if you've had LASIK surgery or RK surgery or any other sort of corneal refractive uh, procedure, 
the standard measurements of trying to uh, figure out your implant power is very difficult. And in fact, it's, it's for the most part an educated guess. This aura provides us a little bit more of an objective way to uh, figure out which implant to put in uh, with more confidence uh, to uh, reach your goal. Thank you. And then how long after surgery can you drive? Uh, most people will drive the very next day. This is a little bit more of a specific question, but if someone has had ALS, what impact does this have during surgery and anesthesia? So um, ALS is a neurodegenerative muscular disease and patients with ALS um, due to their health can um, have cataracts uh, sooner at a younger age. Sometimes they even get a specific type of cataract that we call uh, like a Christmas tree type of cataract. Um, the cataracts, uh, the cataract surgery itself will be identical to a normal cataract. Uh, the risks involved in the cataract surgery aren't any greater. Uh, but uh, depending on the severity of the ALS, uh, we would have to take uh, more of a uh, uh, special consideration of positioning uh, the patient um, we also have to make sure that uh, the post-operative uh, management uh, of the ocular surface is considered. In terms of anesthesia, um, the anesthesia, in my experience, has roughly been about the same, where we do give a, a small amount of pain relief uh, and sedation. Uh, so it's not markedly different. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very similar. Okay, and is the toric lens added to the panoptic trifocal? Yes, panoptics has two models. They have the regular panoptics um, and they also have a toric panoptics. So um, the panoptics uh, implant is available for patient, patients with astigmatism. And that's a very good question. Not all multifocals come in that kind of variety, but the panoptics does in fact have a astigmatic uh, model. Great. Um, and then there was a question about astigmatism. So just kind of maybe reiterating um, what the correction is maybe on the toric lens, just to highlight that there's a few people that ask about astigmatism. Sure, sure. Once again, astigmatism refers to the shape of the cornea. Uh, you can think of uh, uh, like an egg. Uh, if you look at one, uh, uh, the, the long uh, part of the egg, it's a little bit flatter. And then the skinnier part of the egg, it's more curved. And because there's a difference between the curvature of the shape, uh, that difference is the astigmatism, and that astigmatism causes blur. And the astigmatism will be at a certain axis, depending on where the steep and flat parts of the, the meridians of your uh, corneal curvature are. So when you have a torque implant, just like your glasses, where we're measuring how much astigmatism there is and where that astigmatism is at, we try to uh, minimize that astigmatism by correcting the, the magnitude of the astigmatism and then rotating that torque implant into the proper axis to negate that astigmatism, which results in sharper vision. Perfect. So there's a few questions on here that are specific to price um, and what's what type of insurance is covered and all of that, whether you use your medical or vision or both. Um, I don't know if you're equipped to, to handle those questions, Dr. Chang, or if you'd prefer us to handle those offline specifically with um, the people who've requested. Well, I can just kind of maybe answer briefly. Um, there's a lot of confusion uh, at times with vision insurance and uh, medical insurance. Uh, cataract surgeries are under the medical insurance uh, kind of umbrella. Vision insurance does not cover cataract surgeries or any of the upgrades. And once again, when you do have um, cataract surgery, uh, it, the traditional cataract surgery uh, with the standard uh, monofocal implant is what's covered. Perfect. Um, I think there was just one more. Someone asked, what is post posterior capsulometry? I'm not even sure if I said that correct, but <laughs> could you address that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we talked about that secondary film that uh, most people will have form after cataract surgery, where the capsular bag will become a little bit opaque and wrinkled. So that is what we call a PCO or posterior capsular opacity. 
And if that is forming and does impact the vision, then we would perform a YAG capsulotomy. And that is a procedure that is, in, that it is indeed covered by your medical insurance. Perfect. And then the last question is, will this webinar be archived for later? Um, yes, it will. We'll actually send out anybody who has attended or anybody who registered, we'll send a copy of the webinar um, to watch uh, at your leisure and, and reflect on. Great. And Thank you very much. So that's a wrap. Unless anybody has any other questions, I can leave it open for one more minute. And then um, if anybody is ready to schedule, you can give us a call or text us at the 719-630-3937. Um, or if uh, for any reason that the phone lines are busy and you're having trouble getting through after this, since there there is quite a lot of people on today, you can submit a contact us form um, on our website by just going to skylinevisionclinic.com and clicking on the contact us um, in the, the top right corner there. And we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So um, I think if there's no other questions, we'll we'll just uh, we'll we'll call it a wrap. Thank you very much, attendees, and have a wonderful weekend.